Battle of Castle Ito by Johnson Berry. The premise of this battle is that 150 or so of Waffen SS soldiers will go up against a small group of German and American troops fighting side by side to defend a castle. So some background, Schloss Itter, or better known as Castle Itter, is a castle located south of the German-Austrian border in Troll, which is a region of Austria, and it was located about 30 to 45 minutes from Rogo, Austria. It was converted into a prison for high-value prisoners by the Nazis, and it was ready for use by August of 1943. And it was a previously a luxury hotel, and it was a, mid a mountain stronghold dating back to the Middle Ages. And then the castle's first three prisoners were Edouard Gallade, the former Prime Minister of France from 1938 to March of 1940, General Marcès Gamelin, a uh, former Commander-in-Chief of France's Armed Forces, and Leon Jurax, a Secretary General of the Confédération Générale des Chavelles, uh, which was one of France's largest trade unions. Additional prisoners included Paul Reynard, former Prime Minister of France from March of 1940 to June of the same year, Jean Boratra, a French tennis player international salesman who dabbled a bit in politics, Augusta Bruchin, a Jurat secretary and who fell in love with him and lobbied the German authorities to be with him. She was one of the few female prisoners at the castle. Then we have Christian Mabier, former secretary of Reynard, Marcel Grongo, French Tunisia resistance some member and reserve officer in France's colonial armed forces, and his sister-in-law was the daughter of French Army General Henry Girard. And then we have Maxime and, Re and Marie René Josephine Regand, um, a F French Army chief and General Gamelin's replacement as commander in chief, along with his wife. Michael Clemenceau, Fr a French businessman and a major in France's military. Then we have Francis de la Rouque, who was a former member of the Vinci government and he was a confidant of Pietin. And Pientin was considered to be France's leading fascist at the time. Roque was also the head of a resistance movement funneling information to Britain's intelligence services. And then last we have Marie Agnes and Alfred Calais, who was the sister and brother-in-law of General Charles de Gaulle. Additionally, there were a number of numbered prisoners who were prisoners from the nearby that true concentration camp who worked as servants. All the French prisoners considered themselves to be patriots, but divisions existed among them, and the divisions were s so stark that they divided into different groups of factions, and they subsequently even ate at different tables. And then the prisoners had a lot of activities available to them. They can stroll the castle grounds, they were allowed to attend mass as church services in the, in the nearby town of Ito, though under guard. Uh, the female prisoners were allowed regular appointments to hairdressers. Uh, they could be transported off-site for medical treatment. They had higher quality food prepared for them, though that did degrade as the war dragged on. And they were even able to get their hands on a radio from a guard who wasn't supposed to have it e either and thus couldn't report it. And then if you were Jean Borcha, you attempted escape three times. And leading up to the batches, the Soviets and the um, uh, and Americans were approaching quickly, though the Soviets were traveling a bit faster. Uh, German guards and their commander Sebastian Reimo got worried and nervous as this was happening. And the Germans will go on to abandon the castle by May 4th. And, and the prisoners subsequently broke into the arms room to arm themselves in order to defend themselves. And the French prisoners would send out multiple messages to the approaching American troops for help. Captain Jack Lee was the first of these to receive the message and successfully reach the castle. So Captain Jack Lee, a little bit about him. His full name is John C. Lee Jr. 
Uh, he graduated from Norwich, which was, or is, I should say, a leading military college in the United States. He commanded Company B of the 23rd Tank Battalion of the 12th Armored Division. Um, Joseph Gengel was the German who brought the situation into to Lee's attention, and he was subsequently instructed by his own commander to deal with the situation at Itter as he saw fit. So before we get to Gengel, let's talk about another important German figure in this, this battle. Um, Captain Kurt Siegfried Schrader. He happened to be a Waffen-SS officer who grew disillusioned with Nazism. He had been wounded in battle and was recovering at home with his family in Ito. After, mo after moving them from Berlin to Ito during the war. And he subsequently would walk from the cast uh, from his home to the castle and talk uh, and while he was waiting for a staff car to take him to a military hospital for some check for regular checkups, he would chat with the French VIPs and apparently even went so far to share his disillusionment of Nazism with them. He also happened to be acquainted with Ito's commanders, Vimo who went on to task him with protecting the VIPs shortly before Weimar would flee the castle. And then on May 4th, the prisoners went and asked him to protect them. And they did this not because Weimar asked Shardo to do so, but because uh, their talks with him gave them a feeling that they could trust him, and it proved out to be correct as the battle went on. Then the next German who is of significant note in this battle is Major Joseph Gango. He was a highly decorated German major and an, and I quote, an unlikely anti-Nazi resistor, unquote. Um, and this is based off of his service record from earlier in the war. So, uh, obviously as you can see, he would become an anti-Nazi Nazi resistor. Uh, in in the closing months of the war, he went on to assist the Royal Girl Resistance by giving them weapons and ammo and even probably intelligence. Though was when the Waffen SS arrived in Royal Girl, that prompted his final break from the German army or the Wehrmacht. And then, after this time, the Waffen SS had essentially left the town, so. So all that was protecting the town at that point was Gengo and a few of the Wehrmacht soldiers that had decided to abandon Nazi Germany with him and the Austrian resistance fighters of Rogor. At this time he was informed of the situation at Itter by Andres Kolbat who was one of the one of the numbered prisoners at the castle. I believe he was actually the cook. Um, then, so after that he decided that, because he knew he needed to protect the, protect the, the, Fr the French VIP prisoners, but at the same time, he knew he couldn't leave the, the war go virtually undefended. So since he was the effective military commander of war go, being the highest ranking German officer there, he planned to surrender the town to the Americans to ensure the population was protected from the Waffen SS, and also to inform the Americans of the situation at Ito so that the, the Americans could send some protection to help defend the castle. And he brought all this to Jack Lee when he made contact with him. Captain Jack Lee would eventually make his way to the castle, so at that point his forces have been reduced, first to a bridge collapsing resulting in half of the forces not being able to continue on, and then by leaving his second to last tank at Rogo to protect the town and the bridge. And from Rogo, all that he had left when he reached the castle was one tank, the Bastin Jenny, um, four infantrymen, the tank's crew of course, himself, and Joseph Gongo and Gongo's own men, who were referred to as, as tame crowds. And so, at the castle, Lee would park the Biston Jenny to defend the castle's main entrance to cover some weak spots in the castle, including the castle's back door, or more side door, and, to, and parked it in a way to make it difficult 
for the enemy to enter through that entrance. And he also took off to the machine guns to, strate to place them more strategically. And then Lee had his men and Gengar's men spread out to defend the castle. In total there were 10 American GIs, 1 Waffen SS Sabine Schroeder, and 14 Wehrmacht soldiers. And the Waffen SS brought to this battle over 100 troops, 150 ab or so, and some heavy guns including two anti-tank guns. So the battle itself would not start till May 5th. At 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. the Waffen SS would launch probes at the castle's defenses looking for a weak spot. And when the defending Germans deserted, likely defecting to the Waffen SS. And then shortly after all that happened, the Waffen SS would begin their attack that morning. And then four of the Frenchmen decided to defy Captain Jack Lee's orders to stay in the cellar and they took part in the castle's defenses. And the castle of course was damaged and attacked as the Germans were firing their heavy guns. And the heavy guns also happened to hit the tank and destroy it. And at this point the castle was in a pretty dire situation. Lee and his men had been fighting for a while now and they were low on ammunition. They had received a telephone call from Major Kramos, who was another American who was able to get word about the castle's situation, but unlikely he kept on facing um, blockages on his way there and obstacles. But he, they were, he was able to telephone them and say that relief was on the way, but they were cut off. A Gango at this point after that phone call was killed and two of the German defenders were seriously wounded. And the Waffen SS were pressing attack with, I quote, extreme vigor, unquote. Jean Barotta decided that he would jump the castle's wall to deliver a message and a plan to American forces, and he would make contact. And his plan was to lead the Americans to the castle on the quickest route possible, which was up the north, north, north slope, while pointing out Waffen SS positions. And he did so. His only provision, though, was that he got get an American uniform and a gun, and once he got that, they were on their way. Additional American troops under command under the command of Major Kramer and Colonel Lynch would arrive and push the Waffen SS away from the castle. The defenders in front of VIPs would subsequently rush out to the village to greet the reinforcements, who were at the same time going around establishing a perimeter around Ito. Schroeder would approach Lynch and salute Lynch and express his pleasure to formally hand over the former French prisoners who had been under his protection to the Americans. And reporters had arrived with the reinforcements and they went around asking questions of the defenders and f French VIPs. One of the reporters said that he could not turn down the opportunity to interview two of France's former Prime Ministers, though he got pretty short responses from them. Stephen Harding remarked that the aftermath of Schloss Ito battle was rather anticlimactic for Jack Lee and his men, unquote. And that's true when you think about it. The men rejoined their units and the tame crowds, in quotes, were sent off in a truck as POWs. Ito would become the 142nd Infantry's command post after the battle, and then on May 5th, when Germany surrendered, for less than 24 hours, Ito was a provisional headquarters of the Allied occupation forces in Austria. So, the castle had a much more eventful aftermath than the men probably did. And then Lee would go on to receive the Distinguished Service Cross for his leadership during the battle, and Lee's second in command, Lieutenant Bass, would receive the Silver Star for the same thing. So Bass was actually not at the badge for the majority of the battle, rather he was defending Rogo and that bridge with the other tank. And then I just want to express what these pictures are real quick. The top one is showing General Reagan and his wife leaving the castle. Uh, the, s the middle one is showing the Gaulle's sister among the freed French VIPs. And the seventh is showing a memorial in Rogo. 
uh, commemorating Gengo as a war hero. So thank you for watching this video essay on the battle of Castle Ito. Um, my primary source was the last battle by Stephen Harding. Um, he appears to be the foremost authority on this since all the other sources I referenced referenced him at some point as well. And you also feel free to check out all the sources. I highly encourage you to read the last battle. I included a lot more information than I was able to inc include in this video essay. So I encourage you to go check it out. Thank you for watching. And as always, have a good day, a good night, wherever you are. Love history.